Hey guys, John here again, and today I have a look at PlayStation 4 Remote Play running on the PC. That's right, Sony has released a standalone application for the PC and Mac which enables you to enjoy PlayStation 4 games on your PC remotely. The feature is interesting and has been available for use on PS Vita for a while now, but the combination of noticeable input latency and low quality video has kept it from matching things such as the excellent Steam in-home streaming. So how does it stack up on the PC then? Well first and foremost let's take a look at the setup process. Simply hit up the website, download and install the application and run it. Once started you're asked to connect a DualShock 4 controller via USB. From here you can also configure your settings. You can choose from three different resolutions with 720p being the best option available as well as two different frame rates, basically 30 frames per second versus 60. We of course selected the best possible settings here and hit connect. After handshaking with the PlayStation 4, you're good to go. The first thing you'll notice is the fuzzy image quality. By operating at just 720p, the resulting image is lacking the detail you're used to when playing on a PlayStation 4 connected directly to your TV at full 1080p. In Dark Souls 3 here, for instance, the detailed texture work and crisp edges are reduced to a blurry mush. On a smaller PS Vita screen, this might not actually look half bad, but when you're running it on a large PC monitor, it's not particularly attractive. Games with a focus on shadow detail and darkness in general also exhibit highly noticeable compression artifacts. Look around the edges here for some of the more serious macro blocking issues we spotted. The quality just can't compare to the much cleaner presentation you get while using something like Steam's in-home stream feature once again. So how about something like pixel art games? Despite the low resolution of the artwork, these games take great advantage of a full 1080p image by delivering razor sharp pixel edges when blown up on your TV. As you can see, it's not half bad looking here, but the results are quite soft in comparison to what you get natively on your TV. So when it comes to image quality you can expect a softer overall result than the native 1080p output of the console. If it were just a case of downscaled edges it would be one thing, but even at the highest quality setting a lot of the details are lost in the compression. The end result just isn't very clean and it really doesn't hold up that well on a large PC monitor. That said it is easy to imagine playing this on a smaller portable PC which could yield better results due to the smaller screen size. It's not great, but it will get you through in a pinch. Then of course we have performance. Remote Play supports full 60 frames per second playback and it actually works reasonably well, but there are some minor skips and stutters here that do rob the experience of some fluidity. Now with some games such as Trackmania Turbo here, we actually see a relatively smooth 60 frames per second experience with small blips here and there. It is not optimal, but it still plays well enough. We were only able to test this on our network here with all of the devices wired up to the same router, but it's entirely possible that a faster network could actually eliminate these blips altogether, while of course a slower setup or one using Wi-Fi may not fare quite as well. 2D side-scrolling games actually seem to fare the worst in this regard. The remarkable Axiom Verge, for instance, just doesn't play back as smoothly as it should. Running back and forth in this area demonstrates just how the feature can jump between a smooth 60 frames per second and a somewhat less fluid experience. It did actually work extremely well here with Assault Android Cactus though. A smooth, stable performance that manages to play quite well. It's definitely hit or miss. Okay, so moving beyond video quality, we do have to discuss input latency. We decided to test this out by using Street Fighter V. 
We connected the PlayStation 4 directly to the monitor for Video 1 here, and then ran the system through the Remote Play feature for Video 2. Based on our slow motion footage then, the results are clear. Remote Play is 6 frames slower. That's 100 milliseconds, or exactly what we saw on PS Vita earlier on. It's certainly disappointing that this hasn't improved one iota on the PC, but, well, there it is. With this additional leg, the games certainly aren't unplayable, but you will feel a touch of extra input latency in everything you do. For slower paced games, this is not a huge issue, but games requiring extra precision and response time definitely won't feel quite right. You may not have a great time trying to play Street Fighter V online with this setup. So that's really where we're at then. Remote Play on the PC is just a PC translation of what was available on PS Vita already. This actually suggests that the limitations lie within the PS4 hardware itself. The Remote Play feature takes advantage of the hardware dedicated specifically to video recording during gameplay, which is why you cannot record footage using the share button while using this feature. The reality is this might actually be the best that can be achieved using the current PlayStation 4 hardware. Perhaps this feature will be expanded upon in a potential update to the PS4 in the future. Who knows, but for now, it's a cool feature to have, but don't go in expecting a miracle. Anyways, that's all the time we have for now. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe as always, and until next time, this is John, signing out.